Uh, we're talking about Molinism with the president and founder of Free Thinking Ministries, not Molitism like Billy Ray Cyrus and his <laughs> mullet, uh, but we are definitely talking about Molinism. Uh, tell us about Luis de Molina and his views, Tim. <laughs> yeah, you bet. So, uh, so Molinism uh, grounds God's sovereignty not only in his omnipotence as divine determinist solely focused typically, but it also considers God's omniscience. So it's really a view that's dedicated to the maximal greatness of God. And so in my book, uh, I have several sections just where I talk about God's omnipotence, then God's omniscience, and then God's omnibenevolence. And I call these the big three of God's omni attributes. Now, <clears throat> namely, uh, what Molina did was he pointed out as I alluded to earlier, that since God is all powerful, that he's omnipotent, um, you know, think of that omnipotent, that means omnipotential. God can do a whole bunch of things. God can do everything that's logically possible, right? So that means there's a whole bunch of things God can do, even if God never does them, because, you know, it stands to reason that God has not done everything he has the power to do. But if God is all powerful, then that means he can do a whole bunch of things that he's never done and probably that he never will do. So uh, that means that God has the ability to create many different possible worlds, including worlds with creatures whom he does not always causally determine. So that is to say that God, being omnipotent, has the power to create beings who possess libertarian free will, even if he never does so. So, so even if, let's just say everything is causally determined. Let's say that EDD is true. Mm -hmm. um, which I don't think it is, but for the sake of argument, if I were to say, okay, Ed is true, God, exhaustive divine determinism is true, an omnipotent God could have created free creatures, right? Even if somebody doesn't think he did, God could have. He's power. He's that powerful. He's mm -hmm. omnipotent. So unless somebody can show that there's a logical contradiction there, like saying that God could create a married bachelor or that Jesus could you know, draw a triangle with four corners in the dirt, you know, whatever. If somebody could show that there's <laughs> some logical contradiction there, yeah. uh, unless they can do that, then then it stands to reason that God has the power to create uh, creatures with libertarian freedom. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Since we're keeping God's maximal greatness in mind, if, if God was powerful enough to create different worlds and free creatures, even if he never does, and since he's also all-knowing, He's omniscient, All right? So we're starting the God's omnipotent. And now we're saying since he's also omniscient, God would perfectly know all that would happen in each of these potential worlds that are within God's power to create. And, you know, if God chose to create them and even if he never chose to create them. So right. if God knows this, uh, even if he never chose to create free creatures, then he's got middle knowledge. So right. it's vital to understand because that means that he has this knowledge logically prior to his creative decree. So mm -hmm. that's vital to understand. An omniscient God knows what would be the case if he used his omnipotent power and actualized these possibilities. An omnipotent God would, uh, would possess even if he never brought these possible worlds into existence. Um, I'll say it this way. God still knows what would have happened if he created any of these worlds within his power to bring into actual existence. So that might get a little confusing uh, for some that have never studied this before. Um, and we're starting to go into some, maybe some deeper philosophical and theological waters here. So let me make it really simple and just, just restate it like this. God knows all that would happen in any possible world he could create, right? As I'm going to boil it down to that. Yeah. God knows all that would happen in any possible world he could create. So, so focus on the difference between would and could. Mm -hmm. God knows all that would happen in any possible world he could create. So this on, on this full view of God's omniscience, it, it must include what is referred to as middle knowledge. So the question is raised, what is this kind of knowledge in the middle of? So we've got different moments of divine knowledge that theologians and philosophers like to talk about. So the first one is called natural knowledge. Then we've got middle knowledge, and then we've got free knowledge. So natural knowledge uh, just basically boils down to everything that God could do. God knows everything that he could do. Now, since he's omnipotent, that's a whole bunch of stuff, right? And that includes all the things that he's never done. 
And to explain possible did. worlds just for people that might be listening and they're thinking, yeah, okay, you're talking about a world of possibilities, but I mean, we're talking in counterfactual terms here too. So if you yeah. can just give our right. audience a sense of how that's being used. So we're talking about everything that God could do. So anything he could do, uh, even though he never did it, that's called a possible world, if that helps. Now, if you yeah. watch the Avengers, I, I noted earlier that Dr. Strange uh, used something similar to middle knowledge uh, to defeat Thanos, right? So maybe watching those movies will help. It's not a perfect analogy, but it might help you to start to connect some dots. And so Dr. True, yeah. Strange, if you remember, he uses a time stone to look into like, 16 million different possible futures. They use the term uh, possible futures instead of possible worlds. So the 16 million or so different ways uh, the future could be, but, you know, and then they said, well, how many worlds do we defeat Thanos? And he's like, only one of those worlds. <laughs> so, um, so that would then be the best possible world, even if it included a bunch of bad stuff in it too. Um, but, or the best feasible world. Anyway, I don't want to get distracted. Um, so anyway, something that God could have done. So think about it this way. Uh, God did not have to create at all. He could have just remained in what I call a static state of aseity. Um, mm -hmm. Just he was perfectly... For those. Pardon me? I was just saying that's self-existence for those who might not be aware of aseity. Right. He could just, he was totally perfectly content as a trinity. Didn't need to create. Well, if he didn't need to create, then he doesn't have to create. And therefore, you and I exist uh, contingently. And through the grace of God, we exist. We do not have to exist. So a possible way things could have been is that God never creates. Well, that's a possible world. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we've got the actual world that we live in. Well, that's also a possible world, but it's also an actual world. Realized. It's realized, yeah. And But God could have created differently. He could have created a, a universe where humans don't exist. He could have created a universe where Wookiees exist. Um, God, that's within God's power. He could have done that, right? We don't think yeah. that Wookiees actually exist. That, that would be <laughs> awesome, right? <laughs> uh, Cute little but, dudes. <laughs> um, but those are possible worlds. God could have created a world in which you and I aren't having this conversation right now. So you mm -hmm. and I are not having this conversation necessarily, right? Um, we it, Things could have been different. God could have created a world uh, where I'm wearing a, a red shirt um, or a world in which I have hair or a world in which unicorns exist or a, uni a world, a world, in, which in, world in which a world <laughs> in which my biceps are bigger than yours. You know, he could have done that. You know? <laughs> So they are bigger, anyway, those are possible worlds. <laughs> yeah. So so then so so that's everything that God could do, even if mm -hmm. He never does them. So then you've got middle knowledge that Molina discovered, if you will, and and that refers to everything that God knows would happen based on everything He could do, mm -hmm. right? So that's how I like to explain it. Basically, yeah, awesome. middle knowledge is referring to what philosophers call counterfactuals of freedom. But I like to summarize that as what would happen if. So God yeah. in his natural knowledge knows everything that he could do. And God in his middle knowledge knows everything that would happen if he did any of those things that he could do and even the things that he could do, but he never does. All right. God knows all that. And then we have what's called God's creative decree. God makes a decision. After that, after God decides what he's going to do, that he's going to create, make one of these possible worlds an actual world, boom, now you've got free knowledge. And that means that God knows all that will happen in the actual world. So middle knowledge is, the reason why it's called middle is simply because it's in between <laughs> God's natural knowledge and his free knowledge. It's not, you know, some deeper meaning than that. <laughs> so uh, it's in between. And so basically what I show is, you know, if God is omnipotent and omniscient, then he's got to have this uh, natural and middle knowledge. And then once he makes his decision, he's got uh, the uh, free knowledge, which, which means that he knows everything that will happen. Now, maybe before today, you're, um, many of your viewers have never heard of any of these terms before. 
Um, but uh, again, I'll just make it clear. Natural knowledge refers to everything that God knows he could actualize. Um, you know, all potential situations within God's power to make actual. Middle knowledge refers to the fact that God knows everything that would happen if he were to create a certain world within his power to actualize, and even if he never does. And God's free knowledge means that God knows all that will happen in the world that he's chosen to create, and we call that the actual world. So in a nutshell, if God is always omniscient, then God perfectly knows all that could happen and all that will happen, and he knows all that would have happened in different situations that he could have created. So that is to say God knows all that could, would, and will happen, and middle knowledge brings the would. So uh, <laughs> I just told theologians, you cannot dismiss uh, this would knowledge, this middle knowledge, and that, that seems simple enough. But the part that often confuses at least the layperson is that it's vital to note that God's knowledge of what could and would happen is what we, you know, here's some philosophy and theology here. It's logically prior. God's natural knowledge and middle knowledge is logically before God's decision to create the universe and God's knowledge of what will happen. His foreknowledge in the universe is logically after, not chronologically after his creative decree. So that's about as deep into the philosophical waters as I'm going to try to bring your audience today. Um, but I try to really unpack this and explain it more in my book. So if this interests yeah. you, or if you're even confused, make sure you go to my book and I'll try to explain it uh, <laughs> with more clarification, I guess. And be sure to check out uh, freethinkingministries.com where there's lots of articles where Tim and his team have put that together as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video with Dr. Tim Stratton. There is an entire conversation with Tim Stratton and Bobby Conway about the subject of Molinism, predestination, and so much more. You're gonna to wanna to check that out. Click on the link right here. If you enjoyed this conversation and you're looking for more credible answers to curious questions, go ahead and click above on subscribe. And we'll see you next time on One Minute Apologist.